Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today I have a video loaded with tips and tricks for getting full coverage that looks natural. So I'm really going to focus on tips, like how to, what types of products to use, what types of brushes to use, how to use your brush, what motion to use your brush in, and just all these tips that I can think of to achieve full coverage, but not look like you have a ton of makeup on. Make it look more natural, make it look as close to skin-like as possible. Achieving full coverage and skin-like can be challenging, so I'm gonna share Share with you everything that I know, everything that I would do on my clients when I was a working makeup artist. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lisa and I am a makeup educator. I used to be a MAC trainer many moons ago and I discovered my passion for teaching makeup back then. I'm also the founder of BK Beauty Brushes. So I wanna thank you for popping over here. I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. This is a foundation that I've recently fallen in love with. I think this is absolutely beautiful on the skin. It lasts and wears beautifully all day on me it has a very skin-like finish. It doesn't look really matte and it doesn't look overly dewy or glowy either. It doesn't look like makeup. I just hopped online to kind of get the marketing benefits that are described for this foundation. It actually describes it as having a matte finish, which I found interesting because I don't feel that it's a matte finish on me. Now, the shade that I have is CN52 Neutral, and this is like a perfect match to my skin. So obviously that's the next suggestion is to make sure the foundation that you're choosing is a good good match to your skin. I know sometimes that can be challenging and a lot of times we balance it out with bronzer or other products to kind of, you know, even things out, but really look for a foundation that is a true match to your skin. And this one is one for me. So I'm gonna start and what we want to do is, again, we're trying to achieve full coverage, but a very natural finish. And it want, we want it to look like skin. So I'm gonna do about half a pump of this foundation. And I wanna show you the texture of this foundation so that you can kind of understand what we're looking for. So this is a serum foundation. And I really like serum foundations for more of a natural skin-like finish because they tend to be a little bit thinner in consistency. This one's nice. It's actually not super thin. And you can tell by how quickly it, you know, will drip down my hand when my hand is upright. It's not like dripping. So it's got some weight to it, but it still has movement. So you can tell that it's not a thick, moussey formula. Now, what I'm going to recommend when you are trying to get a really natural finish, if you're just starting and you you know, usually you guys see me go straight from my brush to the skin. You certainly can do that. Another tip that you can do is take a little bit on your finger and kind of place it and then go out and blend. Let me show you how I normally apply my foundation and then some tweaks that you can make to just really ensure that you're not applying too much off the bat. So when you're looking at your foundation brush, choose a foundation brush that has really soft bristles and some movement so that it can allow you to build coverage. I love the BK Beauty 106. Our 101 is kind of what we're known for. It's like our most best-selling popular foundation brush. This one is great as well. I like to buff in circles. That's always how I learned. That's how I've been doing makeup for 20 something years. So for that purpose, I love this brush. The 101 is really great. You can also build coverage at the base where the fibers are more dense and then you can sweep and sheer out with these longer fibers at the tip. So either one is a good option. It really just kind of depends on your comfort level and what type of motion you like to do. If you like to kind of sweep, go with the 101. If you like to go in circles, go with the 106. We're gonna use the 106 today. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to want to go straight to the product, pick up a little product, but just kind of pick it up on, you can see that I don't have the entire brush coated in product. I really just have this upper little half here, not even half, I would say a third. And even kind of like, you can either blot it on your hand or you can go to the face and kind of blot it and cover a good surface area. So instead of going right here and then starting to just put all that product in one spot. I'm really kind of applying that product in a pretty good area of the face. I spread that product. I don't apply it all in one place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of press where I want a little more coverage. For me, that's always in the center of the face. And for a lot of us, that tends to be the case. Um, that's usually where the light hits us. So we tend to have more sunspots in the center of the face. That can also be the area where a little more oily. So if we have breakouts, it can be there. Obviously not the case for everybody, but I find when I used to do makeup, I would always need to build more more coverage here. So pressing is going to give you more coverage. Once you get out to the exterior, you can go in big circles to really shear that out and get a really skin-like seamless blend. And you want to take your time here because remember, we're trying to get good coverage, full coverage, 
but we want it to look very natural. So what that means is that we're gonna work and build little bitty layers. We could easily go and grab all this foundation, slap it on the face, blend it out and be done and move on. But what's gonna happen is throughout the day as your skin produces oils and you go about your day, you're outside, you're sweating, you're gonna start to notice that makeup moving, migrating, settling into fine lines because there's just too much sitting on the skin. So let's take our time. Let's take our time and let's build little bitty layers. Let's channel our inner makeup artist. <laughs> I always love like when I sit down and I really take good time on my makeup. It's very therapeutic for me. I really enjoy that time. Now when I get onto my forehead, I, I don't build coverage. I just start right away by shearing and buffing out. I don't have much I need coverage for on my forehead. Really the foundation going on my forehead is really just to like make it all, you know, even, but I don't have anything I really need to cover. I don't have blemishes. I don't have, you know, anything that needs a lot of coverage. So for that purpose, I'm just, you can see, I'm just going straight in and making big circles. This is shearing product out. All right, so we are looking pretty good. I want a little bit more right here on my nose. I tend to have some pink tones there that I need to just focus on. So I'm just gonna use my brush and I'm just gonna press it onto my nose. What's great about this brush is it really does all the work for you. It's dense, but the bristles are so, so soft. Like so soft. So I, you can just press and you're gonna build coverage, but those that softness from the fibers are gonna just blend it out and do all the work. All right, you guys. So at this point, I'm just gonna kind of look in the mirror and see if there's any area I want a little more coverage. Now I still have this little, this little dot here, but I like that. I don't like to cover that. It's kind of like my little beauty mark. Whenever I go get um, BBLs done, <laughs> Laurel, who's my esthetician, she always asks, she's like, do you want me to treat that or do you wanna leave that? I'm like, leave it, don't take it away. I love it, <laughs> that one and that one. Okay, so I think I have applied as much foundation as I need and I wanna show you what I still have left on my hand. And I didn't even do a full pump, you guys. I did probably about a half a pump. And I wanna stress this because I think a lot of times we end up using way more product than we need because that's what we apply on our hand. And we feel like I can't let that foundation go to waste. I need to apply it on the skin. Don't do that. Let it go to waste. Let it go to waste. You know, the alternative is applying too much on your face and then three hours later you look in the mirror and it's like, you've got a mask on. So resist the urge to apply unnecessary product. So now that we have foundation applied, let's talk concealer. Pretty much the same rules apply. Prepping the under eye with an eye cream or a serum, something that really hydrates the eye and really preps it for makeup. The reason being is because our under eye skin is typically the driest part of our face. It's also the thinnest skin on our face. It's also the first place that we start to show signs of aging. You know, we start to get these expression lines and like little fine lines and wrinkles. So so all of those things combined, dryness, thin skin, and texture. Oh, and of course, this is where we put the most heaviest, most pigmented product, which is concealer, on. And when we have a lot of product, it magnifies texture and it's more obvious. So we really have to pull out all the tricks here for under the eyes. Today, I actually have two products because I was testing them and comparing them, um, these eye creams. I have the Colleen Rothschild Tinted Illuminated Illumination Eye Cream on this eye, and then I have the um, Olay Henriksen Banana Bright Stick on this eye. Just find something that feels good under your eye, that hydrates. Uh, I also sometimes like to use a really lightweight serum. I like the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum. That's really nice. So there's a variety of things you can use. You can even use your moisturizer, you guys, but apply it and depending on how thick it is, the viscosity of the product, if it's thick or thin, if it's very thick, you wanna give it time to absorb into the skin. You don't wanna go and apply concealer on top of a heavy skincare product that's still sitting on the skin. If it's lighter weight and more of a serum, you can apply it and then go in with concealer. Okay, so that's my spiel on prepping the under eye area. Now let's talk about concealer. Same thing applies, you guys. You wanna find a concealer that's a lighter weight texture. Today I'm using the MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. This is a long wear concealer. I feel like this gives enough coverage as that I need and it's very lightweight. The shade is also very important. You see a lot of similar themes here in the foundation of the concealer. I'm gonna recommend that you get a concealer that has a bit of a peach undertone or some warmth to it and the reason being is you wanna avoid a concealer that is really, really bright and too light for your under eye. I mean, that's obviously not gonna look natural, but not only will it not look natural, but it will even almost magnify dark circles, which sounds a little kind of counterproductive. It's light. It should brighten, but it's kind I know I say this all the time, but it's, it's the best way to illustrate my point here is that putting white pantyhose over a bruise, you're not really fooling anybody. You're just gonna have kind of like a gray tone 
to it, right? That's what's gonna happen if you used too light of a concealer. So I am going in with the shade NW25 and I'm going to apply a little bit here. I have a little bit of green kind of veins there that you can see. I'm gonna apply a little bit underneath my eye here. And then I always like to apply a little concealer here to kind of lift the eye. Did you notice I didn't go all the way under my eye? I didn't paint underneath my eye with this. Most concealers, you don't need to do that, you guys. You really don't. Just apply a little here and then a little here. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying we're not going to have concealer here. We were, we are, but we're just gonna use what's here and kind of blend it outward. When you apply it all underneath the eye, you just apply way too much product. It's really not necessary. Concealer is, by really most definition, a full coverage product. Its purpose is to really conceal. So um, you'll find that most concealers have, you know, just use a little bit. Now, as far as application tool, I like to use a dense brush when I'm trying to get a real natural finish. Um, think of this as like a beauty sponge and a brush had a baby and this is what you got, the BK Beauty 110 brush. Now we all know that sponges are great when you're applying full coverage products because they kind of absorb a product and make it look a little bit more natural. You always get more of a natural finish when you use a sponge. Now the brush is the similar idea. You're gonna get a natural finish. It's gonna, it's gonna absorb a little bit of product but certainly not as much as a sponge will. So, and it buffs it out and blends it out and like, Two seconds. I snapped with my left hand. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> okay. And I'm just kind of pressing it onto the skin and then I'm gonna take whatever's left and sweep it over the eye. So everything is blended in. I'm gonna add this extra little step just to kind of seal the deal and um, just make it look even a little bit more natural. I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus from MAC. Just a little bit so that my brush is damp and I'm gonna go back over underneath the eye. This is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna kind of set underneath the eye. It's also gonna absorb any excess concealer that we might have, and it's gonna hydrate under the eye. So it's gonna do all three of those things, which is gonna assist in making everything look a little more natural. So the last step to your complexion routine, and remember, we're just talking about foundation, concealer, and powder in this video. We're not addressing bronzer and blush and all of that, is a setting powder. Now, I really prefer loose powders when I'm setting my makeup. They're just lighter weight. They're more refined. Um, they're typically finely milled, so they just look more natural and weightless on the skin. Now, you can purchase a variety of different types of setting powder. You can purchase a matte one. You can purchase one that has some luminosity to it, or you can purchase one that looks more like natural and skin-like. Like, you want to find one that looks like skin. So today I'm using the Stay Beauty. This is the Air Set Radiant Loose Setting Powder Translucent Medium. Now it says radiant and it's very, very soft radiance, very natural. And it pairs well when you are using a foundation that has more of a matte finish, like the Clinique is described as having. It's just going to give a little bit of life to the skin. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to matte everything down because natural skin doesn't look mattified and it's not going to give a hyper you know, glow because that doesn't look like natural skin either. Next, you wanna choose a very, very large fluffy brush. I'm using the BK Beauty 102. It's our largest uh, powder brush. I mean, you can see almost how floppy it is. I don't really know that floppy is like the most <laughs> like, positive sounding word, but it's perfect for this purpose because it's gonna pick up and deposit a very light, sheer layer of product, which is what we want. So I have deposited some powder into my little top here. And I'm gonna go and pick it all up with my 102. I'm really gonna get the brush in there. But before going to the skin, you guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm either gonna press it on the back of my hand to kind of get some of that excess powder off, or you can just tap it, you know, tap it on your fingertip too. Now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna lightly, lightly press to the skin. And then I'm gonna go back on my hand and grab whatever's left, go to the other side. We are just trying to set this foundation but not really change the finish of it. Again, if you've chosen the right foundation, you really shouldn't need a whole lot of powder to set it because it should be a foundation that's long wearing and it'll stay in place. And that is the end of the complexion routine. So I have very full coverage, but the skin looks natural. It doesn't look like I have a lot of makeup. It doesn't look like I'm wearing a thick layer of makeup. And this is gonna look good and last all day. So I will list the products that I use in the description box, but I'll also list not only the products and the shades, but really kind of what type of product to look for, because chances are you probably already have something at home that'll work. Certainly don't get hung up on feeling like you need these exact products. Look at what you have and see what you're missing. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions down below. As always, thank you for hanging out and spending your time with me. I really value and appreciate your time. It's our most precious asset. Have a great day, you guys, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.